Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Hangout titled Media in the Age of Digital Workplace. I'm Maureen Bradford, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Google for Enterprise in the Americas. And we're excited to continue in our series of Hangouts titled Disrupt or Be Disrupted. It's part of a series of conversations with leading IT organizations. And this is the third in our series. We've also talked with Briggs & Stratton CXO, as well as San Nina CIO from the manufacturing side of the house. And they shared stories in the past uh, couple of months on how they're radically changing the norm with technology. Today, we'll focus on media. And I'm very happy to welcome first Ashley Spray, who is Netflix's IT director, and also Nicholas Gardner. He's the senior director of Intel Syst er, internal systems at the weather company. Both of them will discuss with me how Google Enterprise and their products are helping Netflix and Weather Company transform IT and the business. Uh, but first, a little bit of housekeeping. We'd love to hear from you on social. And please include the one word hashtag gone Google when you comment. So that's G-O-N-E Google on any of your social comments. So let us hear from you. And now to kick it off, let's start with Ashley. Ashley, tell us a little bit about Netflix at a high level. Sure. Um, hi there. And Netflix is an internet streaming provider of TV shows and movies. Um, we're actually an Emmy Award winning producer of our original series, including House of Cards and Orange is the New Black. Um, our business model is subscription based. And I'm pretty sure everybody else is familiar with what we're doing. So. Netflix is a perennial change agent, starting with your mail order business and your preference queuing model that really disrupted the retail model. And then you also foresaw the shift to streaming video and disrupted your own business. How does that type of disruptive culture influence you at Netflix? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Um, the culture at Netflix is disruptive, um, high performance. And we're able to take that to IT and allow for our employees to be innovative and to disrupt technology as well. Um, I think another important aspect of the culture that a lot of companies might miss is the transparency and setting context uh, to all your employees prior to a change. Um, that is something that we really believe is what makes changes successful. And if it's missed, that they just might fail. So it's that freedom to, to challenge the norm, to make sure that, hey, it's OK to try something different as long as we're, we're making sure that it doesn't dis disrupt too much internally. Um, thanks, Ashley, for sharing a bit of that. Let's also hear from Nick from Weather Company. You have been a Yeah, absolutely. So the Weather Company, we consist of four companies, the Weather Channel, True to a data and analytics company. Yeah. So your leadership had a vision about uh, what the impact has been on consumers as well as on corporate behavior. So before we get into that, Nick, will you tell us a little bit about what a company in general? Yeah, absolutely. So the weather company, we consist of four major properties, the Weather Channel, WSI, Weather Central, and Weather Underground. At, at, us, at our core, we provide millions of people with the best weather forecast every day, content and data across our television, our online, and our mobile, um, as well as all other digital properties. For WSI and Weather Central, they provide professional services to such industries as aviation, energy, insurance, and media. And these are things that help you be safe when you're flying, like turbulence, understanding, understanding how wind um, affects the wind farms and that kind of thing. I think so one of the we've had over 100 million downloads of our app just to kind of, you know, our actual distribution is very large across all of our platforms. So 100 million downloads is fantastic. And tell us a little bit more about what's going on with the Weather Channel recently. All right, so two years we, we started in on a journey. It's a, basically a transformation. How do we transform from a media company to a big data technology company? And we, we knew that to be successful, there were two keys to that transformation. We had to go through a cultural revolution, much like Ashley spoke of. We had to get more like them, which is being very, very fast, very open, you know, holding people accountable, as well as we needed to really increase the quality of our technology stack. You know, 
everybody deals with weather, weather on a daily basis. Mother Nature is unpredictable. And so we have got to be ready for everything and anything it throws at us. At our core, we've got to keep people safe. We've got to enable businesses to make better decisions. And the only way we do that is we can't be down, we can't be late, and we have got to be active. So the, the initial move, we had to give our employees what I call it the employee toolkit. So the concept is simple. i got to provide employees with the top-notch tools for them to do their job while also knocking down every single barrier I can, I can that technology introduces so they can be productive and feel like they can succeed at this company. Um, we very quickly decided that we needed to go to the Google Collaboration Platform because we just did not have anything in that space. And we felt like at a core that that could get us to the velocity and the productivity needed to reach this, to successfully make this transformation, right? So we, we're, we're globally distributed. Core offices are throughout the United States. Um, just a quick story. We, we were able to actually realize this benefit very, very quickly. It was probably five or six months after our initial release of Google, or transition onto Google. We actually had a major project, one of those projects that sets the tone for the company, sets the tone for the culture revolution. And we're able to hit that project. We're able to nail it, right? And it had to do with our core data, our core science. And we actually had a uh, pretty cool event where we had a, our scientists up on the stage taking questions, kind of a total interactive thing with our leadership um, teams. And towards the end, they, they asked them, they said, how were you able to do this? How were you able to do such a large project? We've never been able to do it before. You, you nailed it on time, on budget, the whole nine yards. And one of the, course, one of the main scientists said, to be quite frank and honest with you, we didn't think we were going to be able to do it. We had teams in San Francisco, Boston, New York, Atlanta. But due to, tech, due to the Google platform, due to the collaboration, due to the Hangouts, due to the docs, and not having to do things in email with attachments, while it took a minute to get used to, it was probably one of the core reasons why, or it was the core reason why, be able to deliver on such a, a project that was able to set the tone for changing the culture here. I think you had mentioned too that the COO had had asked a question about that. Can you tell us a little bit about his re, his response when he heard this? Oh uh, yeah, it was. I mean, you had to be there. It's one of those moments. I know everybody's already had these moments, but the COO at the very end of that, it was so perfect. He turned to the audience. He he looked kind of looked directly at me and said, "Did we record that? Because that was money." <laughs> And well, actually, with Hangouts, you can record these. So next time, the, the scientists want to make sure that they do something on time, under budget, uh, across four different offices, they can record it. It's great. So both you, Nick, and Ashley have mentioned that transforming your business model with new product and new ways of delivering those products. Um, we know that in, in media, the industry is moving so fast because of mobile and digital. Um, it used to be that media changed over decades. Technology lasted for years, if you think about newspapers being dominant in radio and TV. Uh, but now with digital and social, it gets disseminated in milliseconds. Uh, I saw recently that with the Super Bowl, there were 25 million tweets. And that's an 80% increase in just a couple of years, which is crazy. And we also are seeing that of media interactions, 9 out of 10 of them are screen-based. So as I show a next slide here, I thought it was interesting just to call out that context really determines the device. Um, it's no surprise that most of our time is spent on smartphones, you know, more than a third. Um, it's very convenient. But what we at Google have recently seen from research is that about 84% of people use their phones while they're watching TV. This multi-screen world is just getting um, busier and busier. Outlets right now are just under 10%, but we know they're growing uh, quite quickly. And Nick, I'd be interested in your perspective. How have you seen devices proliferating as, a, as an effect on the weather company and how people are checking weather with you? All right, so obviously we have a very, very strong mobile um, presence across you know, all of our products, across all devices. Um, in terms of you know, my world and how it's affected our internals and our culture, um, we have a philosophy that um, our CIO brought, which is you know, work anywhere on any device at any time. While that sounds simple and just straight and, you know, not difficult, 
the productivity increases and the morale increases when you actually implement a philosophy like that are, are outstanding. I mean, our employees finally feel like that IT has given them the products and the technology that they can be successful, they can do their job. You know, and the ability to attract top talent for the first time in a long time. We have, you know, engineers that come from right down the road here at Georgia Tech, top engineering school. And in the past, they used to come here and be like, oh, great, you know, my technology in the house is better than what you guys have. But now they come here and they're like, holy crap, your Google room is raw. You guys are giving me what I need, you know, and they get excited and they want to come here. You know, and it's, and it's a, you know, it's a selling point to, to be able to tell somebody, and I, I tell my team, and it's really hard to get them out of the, the I got to be at the office to work. But I tell them, I said, feel free, go to the coffee shop, take your dog, go down there, fire up your iPad, and work. I mean, there's no reason why you can't do that, and be productive and get things done. The whole key is you've got to do your job, but you should be able to do it anywhere at any time. Um, operationally, it's it's made a huge difference. I mean, we have people cruising the field, covering all the major events, you know, weather events and whatnot. We have our morning show goes on, on um, off-site and whatnot. As you can imagine, there's a big IT presence in that. In the past, it's been enormous. We've had to send all sorts of IT people, set up computers, and do all this, that, and the other. And to be short now, all we do is we send two, two IT people. Everybody knows their device, whether it's an iPad, an iPhone, our on-air talent. You know, they might like it. They like droids. They use droids. And they can use what they want. We don't have to have that IT presence, that huge operational presence that can connect to the Google Cloud. And it just makes our, our lives as IT so much better. Yeah, that's, those are great stories. I mean, for us, I think about how we used to do uh, these types of hangouts, and it was a lot of heavy lifting. And now this is just, uh, you know, just the background here in my office. And actually, we know that you're not even in the office. I mean, but tell us a little bit. You're, where are you today? Yeah, I'm actually home. So I'm on wireless, and um, so far, so good. That's great. So it's good to hear some of those examples of how the devices are helping you pare back on resources that you need so that you can apply those resources to more value-add activities. Thanks, Nick, for sharing those. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit from both of your perspectives about personalization and how that's affecting your business. We know that with media companies, it's so important to make sure that the content for your subscribers and for your viewers and users is based on their behaviors, what they prefer, and which devices they're using. Uh, I think any company needs to understand that a great experience requires personalization and some you know, response to their instant gratification. And if you don't provide this, someone else will. That's what we keep hearing from our various customers. But I'm also cognizant that that puts a burden on IT and requires you to be really flexible. Uh, Netflix has, has really succeeded in this area. Ashley, can you give us a little bit of color on that? Yeah, um, I think this is really where Google can help companies. I mean, we've always been flexible. Um, bring any device is what we like to call it. Um, and it's just always been that way. So for us, it wasn't really a shift we needed to make. Um, but you do need to have that flexible model within IT to be able to support it. Um, but, um, you know, really mobilizing the workforce is really powerful. Um, our employees are able to access information no matter what their location, what device they're on. Um, and be able to respond uh, via the means that they prefer. Um, and you know, while this does keep the business moving forward, which is fantastic, it also, like you said, is really personal. So it's really about giving people a better work-life integration. Terrific. We've talked a, a bit about some of the products that you know, Google is offering. And just in a, in a quick nutshell, I can summarize a few of them for, for those who are on the, uh, viewing this right now, uh, just to help you keep on the same page. So we have a variety of different offerings in our enterprise lineup. And they include our cloud infrastructure, as well as BigQuery to handle uh, a lot of analysis, um, big data needs, but also our capabilities on search and our lineup of Google Apps. Uh, Nick and Ashley have both mentioned a little bit about that with our Hangouts capability, part of Google Apps. But that also includes slides, presentations, text documents, Gmail, uh, as well as G+. And in addition, our latest is our Chrome devices, Chromebooks, which are really going gangbusters, especially in, uh, in enter enterprise and education. Um, and so there's a variety of different things that people are using. Ashley, first of all, what are some of the Google products that Netflix is going, is, has been using? And, and how do you see cloud in particular as a way for transforming? Sure. Um, cloud in particular, we really see as a, a means of innovation. Um, 
it really transforms IT and then just enables everybody else to be highly productive. Um, it's kind of like you guys say, work the way that you live. Um, we're providing our employees with um, devices and tools that they use in their daily life, but then it's coming to them on an enterprise platform. Um, you know, even like just having this hangout here with, with us, um, it's really a great way for us to be more creative at work and having one-on-one -on -one conversations and working groups. Um, we also use the Hangouts um, in another model, just having kind of an always-on portal. Uh, we, we provide this to our, our tech rooms, which we call Nerds, um, and these, these locations are all connected. There's at least five on at a time, and they're able to, you know, whether they're international or, or local, um, they're able to be on the same page, really always know what problems are arising, um, and at the same time, they're providing this always-on portal to employees. If they walk into a, a, a room at a campus and maybe there's nobody there, um, they can just talk through the Hangout and get help right away. So, oh, that's fantastic. So they don't have to have much downtime traveling from one spot to a, you know, a major tech stop that might be across campus, mm -hmm. or just wait for somebody to be on chat. They just go into uh, a room that already has a Hangout set up, and they instantly can talk with an expert to get, get the problem fixed. Yeah. Very cool. And it's called Nerds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And tell us a little bit more. I think that uh, when, when Netflix had joined Google about a year ago, there was some discussion about moonshot thinking and some of our cloud infrastructure. Can you tell us of, about um, the relationship between what Netflix had been thinking as well as what um, some of that Google conversation might have triggered? Yeah. Um, so at Netflix, IT is currently about 80% in the cloud. And our, our goal was already, you know, think we're already thinking, let's try to get 100% by the end of the year. Um, but once uh, that our executive went to um, that uh, Think Cloud conference, um, he did come back with a lot of discussion around Moonshot and 10x thinking. And that really got us, you know, reevaluating our roadmap and just being more aggressive. Um, and at the same time, it even took him to another level of um, publishing that roadmap publicly. Um, so that was a, a big transformation, I think, in IT and just really trying to um, evolve other companies around us to do the same thing. So when you mentioned that the, the prior slide was just showing um, uh, a Googler, as we call them, here at Google, whose title is Captain of Moonshots. That is Astro Teller, who is responsible for helping to push forward some of our our um, more novel and longer term projects. Um, for example, in the in Google X Labs for driverless cars, our Wi-Fi capability through balloons, like the Loon project. And so, when we think about moonshot thinking, it's not just on the massive long term capabilities, but it's also even for the the nearer term needs and the the goals of IT. And so, I think that. So what you were just segueing over to, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what Netflix uh, is looking or is aspiring to for now versus yesterday. Um, sure, sure. So I think you're going to share a slide there. Um, so here we included focus on you know how we could transform our organization. Um, so we're transforming from you know the tactical to more strategic, um, as well as you know the top down to collaborative, um, and. Again, I think the most powerful thing about this is that it's not just directed at IT's management team, but it's directed at the whole organization. It also seems great to see the span of the, the areas of focus. It, it's, it spans strategic and the business needs right down to the metrics and the quantification of what's being done, which, which must be pretty um, inspiring for the folks in, in, across the IT org. Can you tell us a little bit about which Google products in particular you're applying for some of these now? Roadmap components. Um, sure. I mean, the products that are used for us. Um, uh, you know, Docs really is probably the heaviest use that we've got um, across the board. Um, we're really a memo-driven culture, so that allows for us to bring a lot more context to meetings and prepare people um, for discussions. Um, it's been really amazing to see people, you know, just collaborate within these docs and the commenting and just the preparation that happens before they even meet. Um, so I think you know that just the, the efficiency of time has been really valuable. Um, to give you an idea, I've got some numbers here, but in the past quarter, um, we've added over 9,600 docs, um, over 1,600 sheets, and over 1,400 slides. So that's been really valuable to the business. Um, 
And those are ones that are just shared um, with anybody. They don't have to send them as attachments. They're accessible according to the people you want to give permission to. They can view, Correct. they can edit, or not have access to them. That's right? Yeah, yeah. We, we default to you know anyone at Netflix with a link because we are an open culture. Um, but of course, if, if the doc needs to be more secured, then, then the owner is able to do that. Wow, so over 9,000 docs just in Q2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, and then the more products, uh, the Hangouts I spoke about um, a bit there. So, um, you know, we also recently integrated the Chromebox for meetings um, into our meeting rooms um, and starting to kind of build out that space. Um, and then uh, last year, anybody that's following us on our earnings calls, you'll notice that um, a year ago we decided to disrupt our earnings call format um, from that traditional audio call to a Hangout on Air. Um, and that has really, I think, you know, um, allowed for a different kind of interaction between our leaders and um, the investors and the public, and it's been pretty powerful. Yeah, it's great to see the, the chat capability integrated with it. Thanks, Ashley, for sharing some specific examples. And okay. let's hear a bit, Nick, from you. It's incredible to see how Netflix is using Hangouts and Docs. Tell us a little bit, Nick, from a weather company perspective, um, some of the conversations that you're having around your 4S strategy for the digital age. Right. So our leadership implemented what we call the 4Ss, which is safety, service, science, and storytelling. And as I alluded to earlier, it all starts with safety. I mean, that's our core mission. We have got to provide our millions of customers with the content and data to keep themselves safe, to keep their families safe, to make the right decisions when it needs be at a moment's notice. And then that goes straight into the services that we provide our, our business partners. So, you know, giving our business partners those that same data to then turn around and, for instance, develop services such as turbulent a turbulent service for the airlines where they can fly around the turbulence instead of flying you straight through it. <laughs> so, you know, which then goes back to safety. And then at the core of all of it is our science, right? So we take the all the bits and the bytes and the petabytes of data and we put it all together and we come up, we take all sorts of forecasting models, you know, dozens of them, we come up with what we feel is the best forecast. And that's just part of our data, right? Part of the science of it. We have to do OBS, we have to look back in time. So taking all that data, putting it into a raw format, but then we have to turn it around, and we can't just give you the raw format, because you guys would be like, OK, great, this means nothing. So then we have to <laughs> tell the story. We have to get you engaged. We have to feel like when you come to the channel, you're watching, we're telling your story. When you go to our devices, we're telling you that same story. Because then it circles back around to say, hey, the more people that are using our platforms, our devices, watching our channel, when they, when they need to be safe, when, they, when there's an event happening, they'll have it. They'll be there. They'll be on our platforms. They'll get the alerts. They'll be able to be safe. So it's this four S's that kind of goes around in a circle on itself, and it always comes back to being safe. Providing that core service to our millions and millions of customers is the root of this company. I, that must be very exciting to see how the, the focus has transformed from just supplying some, some weather information to seeing how it's actually impacting people and what they're going to do that day. Um, and whether or not they feel confident of what's going on around them. So that's, that's very cool. So as you talk a bit more about whether a company's transformation to a data and analytics company, not just a broadcaster, tell us a bit about which Google products you're using to help you with that um, and, and how they've worked, what hiccups you may have run into, things that, that you'd like the rest of the viewers to know about. So we, we, you know, we do use you guys' big data platforms to store, and we use your compute, and and uh, pretty much everything in the shop, the big query, we, we get into that as well. Um, we are on the cusp of making that major change into taking our data from, let's say there's 2 million points throughout the world that we do data on, and trans or um, 200,000 points, and turning it over to you know 20 million points of data that mm. we can put that on. So as you can imagine, as soon as you make a jump like that in that fold, um, we have to be able to store the data. And that doesn't mean racking and stacking new hardware here. That means utilizing platforms such as Google to store our data, analyze our data, 
you know, get new insights that we never had before, that we could never even dream of before. Um, so I think that's that's where we're moving in terms of our data platforms. Also, uh, tell us a little bit about some stats that you had for the Hangouts and the Chromebox for meetings usage. Right. The It'd be useful for, for folks on the bridge to know examples of what the, the scope is and, and who is using them. So similar, similar to Ashley, you know, we, we've had great adoption. Um, we're, you know, back to the slide where you're taking from a tactical to strategic. It's just funny because we're doing the same type of thing here. Um, but in terms of usage, Hangouts has been off the charts here. We average between 125 to 150 Hangouts a day. Now, to keep that in context, we're only a company of about 1,500 to 1,600 people. Um, so that's pretty, pretty amazing. We have 40 people. 10% of your people are using Hangouts if you, if you just applied it that way every day. Correct. And that's just a Hangout. That doesn't count the number of people on the Hangouts, right? So no. it's, it's huge. Um, 40, we have 43 Google Rooms deployed throughout the country. Um, we have our collaboration stats that go up and down, but as of right now, I don't have the stats for broken down to actual Google Docs, but we have over 1.2 million documents stored in Google Drive. Um, I think about 40% are actual native Google Docs. Um, we have over 550 Google Sites deployed, utilized by the company to run projects, just disseminate information. And then I think a very interesting fact that goes back to like Ashley has spoken about with the open culture. So again, we only have 15 to 1600 employees. We have 2300 registered devices on our Google platform, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, and that number just keeps going up and that goes back to allowing people to bring their own devices, work at home, work anywhere they want. Um, so the stats you can dig in 100 ways from Sunday, but I mean, the end of the day, the adoption has been crazy good, and every day it gets better and better, and every day you fight that single battle with helping somebody understand how they can utilize the platform and be more productive, and it's just one more step every day, every day. Oh, well, thank you for sharing the specifics of how some of these things are being used. That's great to hear those examples. Um, as, we, as we want to start thinking about summarizing some of the things we've been talking about, um, first of all, Nick, tell us a bit about some of how these products have transformed the company overall. And you're showing here the global perspective. Did you want to give a couple examples? You had mentioned um, when we were talking earlier about your morning show, et cetera. Right. So, I mean, being able to connect the different offices has been outstanding. But again, back to like the morning show. Or so we just released a new morning show, AMHQ, and they they were doing a road show. I think they went to. New Orleans, Miami, um, a few other places. But again, the ability to pack up and not have to send half our IT staff to go with them to make sure they get plugged in, to make sure they got the VPN set up, to make sure they can print, to make sure they can get onto our corporate, you know, to be able to just say, hey, go take it, take your iPad, that's all you need, go. We'll have one IT person on staff so we can make sure that you might have to connect to a printer that's in the field one time, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's been it's been awesome, I mean, hands off, you know, and it's allowed, like you said earlier, for us to stay here and continually push forward with the products that return value to the company and not just sit there and support um, all day long. Thanks, Nick. And Ashley, from your perspective, what are some of the gains that, that you have found most recently at Netflix, whether it be on employee uh, recruiting and retention or efficiency, or just pushing the envelope as Netflix is really comfortable doing in, in new products. <laughs> yeah, I say probably all of the above. Um, certainly, I, I do think that bringing up the recruiting piece is important. Um, we did feel like you know going Google was kind of that cool factor that you needed um, these days to really pull in um, great talent and get great young talent as well. Um, and just again, you know, going back and, and providing them with the devices and the environment that they're used to on a daily basis. Um, but I think the biggest gain across the business, across the company, is, is that doc usage and, and being able to transform our business to a memo-driven culture. Um, the, the efficiency has been um, just you know, off the charts. And um, really, I think it's, it's noted across the business in each department. 
Okay, thanks. And Nick, I, you had mentioned at uh, one point when we were having some conversations together about an employee toolkit that you had produced and is now uh, are now deploying across the weather company. Tell us a bit about that. Right. So, I mean, it, it's ever evolving, but it's when you come into the company, you can go, you can select. You know, I want a desktop. I want an iPad. You know, I want a. I mean, a or a Nexus tablet. I want a Droid. And you get that toolkit, and it comes loaded with all your tools you need on it. It comes loaded with your Uber conference, your Uber chart, everything that connects into Google, and Google's your hub. And as we as we continually deploy out more apps that hook into the Google core infrastructure, that toolkit expands and expands. And instead of focusing on, you know, how do we get the VPN and configured on your machine? How do we configure your phones? I mean, it's all just in that one central location that's easy to deploy and easy to use. And to be honest with you, the training has decreased because back to what Ashley said, getting the top talent, things that people have to realize when top talent comes out of college, for instance, back to my Georgia Tech example, they come out using Google Apps. Here. I mean, so they come into here and they're like, hey, I know, I know this world's all about. We can rock and roll. Let's go. <laughs> right, and it really, you know, it makes a major difference, major difference. Well, that's great to hear about the, the more seamless onboarding that happens with it. Would you also touch a little bit on some of um, a challenge or two that you, that you encountered and, and how you got over that? And I'll start, Nick, uh, with you, and then also hear from Ashley if you've got one to share. All right, so, I mean, we, you know, going into it, I knew, I, I, I like to say I had the, uh, I had the 30, 50-20 rule, you know, 30% is going to love the change, 50% is going to be like, yeah, yeah, I can use either, whatever, I'm good, and then 20% are just going to hate it. <laughs> it's just kind of just get over it. And so, I mean, the challenge is figuring out, getting ready for the 20%, taking it day by day with that 20% to get that percent down to the 15%, 14%. Um, and then just back to getting to more of an open culture um, is, is always a challenge, and I'll pass it to Ashley. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I would change the numbers a little bit for Netflix because we are, you know, expected to embrace change. Um, but definitely 10% with our number um, that we were going to count on hating it. Um, and it's possible they're still out there. Um, but you know, I think anybody that was in that kind of middle ground, um, it, we were able to work with them and prepare them. And um, I think you know now people would say that it's the best thing we ever did. But certainly the challenge is, is the people. It's, it's the habit changing from the day in a life of outlook and how is this, you know, are you really going to strip that away from me and how am I going to live my life now? Um, that, that was the most challenging piece. Okay. Is there anything else that you just want to share with the, with the viewers here? I think um, uh, it's, been, it's been great to hear some candor from both of you on what you, what you faced, what you were aspiring to. Uh, and what, what's been working so far and things that you overcame. Anything else that you'd like to make sure that people are hearing? All I'd say is, you know, be brave. Don't be scared about this. It, it's going to happen sooner or later. If you're not going to do it, you'll be darn right. Your competitor's doing it, and it, you better be ready to win. And so just do it. Fall off the Band-Aid and go. Everybody can change, even if they don't want to. They will, um, and it will succeed. It's a very, very good platform. Um, and it's forward thinking, and it's it's where you want to be. Yeah, I agree. I, I say benefit from um, existing customers like us. Reach out. We can give advice um, about challenges we went through and how we overcame them. Um, I think you know really um, again dealing with the people. Um, it's having that pilot group. It's about setting that context beforehand. Um, I think what we found was powerful um, in going Google in the beginning was all the workflows that we found as we were working with different groups um, through the change and um, prior to the change, we are actually able to really improve a lot of their workflows um, you know, with, with new processes that included um, Google instead of what they were doing before. So um, I think that as you, you'll, you'll overturn a lot of things and actually make um, a lot of things better for your employees and for your IT team. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a positive change. Embrace the change. Celebrate the change. It's something that Everybody can be excited about, and uh, like Ashley said, you'll uncover a lot of things, and you've got to take them in stride, and instead of saying, uh-oh, what do I do, solve it, solve it the right way for the future, and it's one more positive down on top of it.
Uh, well, thank you both. I think a few things that come to mind, um, just to, to recap, were uh, in terms of the great insights that you shared, the idea of the nerds rooms at, at Netflix, and to complement that on the Weather Channel and Weather Company side of the house, the 100 to 125 hangouts a day for a company that has about 1,300 people, amazing, over a million docks and drive, um, the 30, 50, 20 rule of rollout, and then the other, which I, I also loved, was just your thought about the, in, in terms of new employees and onboarding, just you know, get them going easily, let's rock and roll and get, get moving. So that was great. Thank you both for sharing some specifics with us. We appreciate your insight, and I hope that you have a great afternoon. Thank you to everybody on the bridge. Thank you. For joining us. Please stay tuned for our next Hangout on Air series, which focuses on retail. Next time, we will have Mike Geressi, who is the CIO from Tory Birch, to talk about that great brand for, for women's fashion. And it takes place on Wednesday, August 6th. So we started out our Disrupt or Be Disrupted series with manufacturing. Today, we covered media with Nick and Ashley from Weather Company and from Netflix, respectively. And next up, in the beginning of August, again, Wednesday the 6th, is Mike Geressi, who is the head of IT from Tory Birch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ashley and Nick. Welcome.